Hello, my name is John Gorman. I'm in the Loyola PsyD program, class of 2013, and going to talk to you a little bit today about measuring psychotherapy outcome and how can you how you can monitor your client's progress uh, at the clinic. Um, so, first, just some overall basics of um, psychotherapy outcome. Uh, it's basically a way to measure psychological functioning. Um, so psychological functioning by one theory called the phase model consists of three phases or three distinct components. Uh, and those components are subjective well-being, which kind of measures distress, life satisfaction, energy and motivation. Um, then psychological symptoms, uh, and these are kind of mapped on to the DSM criteria for a variety of different disorders such as uh, depression or anxiety or uh, PTSD. And finally, life functioning. So how is someone doing in their life? How, how are they doing at work and school and relationships? Um, and these three phases um, are what we measure for determining how well a client is doing in therapy. Um, so it's not just whether or not a client is getting better, but which uh, what, what aspects of their functioning are improving and at what point. Uh, so this is helpful because actually according to the research, these three phases, uh, well-being, symptoms, and life functioning, um, kind of change at different points throughout the course of therapy. So I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can track which phase is improving when, and how you can uh, determine whether they're kind of on course for what's expected over the general course of psychotherapy treatment. Um, so, the way we measure that at the clinic is with a form called the POMS, which stands for the Psychotherapy Outcome Assessment and Monitoring System. So there are actually three forms that go along with the POEMS. There's the intake form, which you give to your clients at the first session. There's also an outcome monitoring form, which you give to your client um, at every follow-up session. And then there's a discharge form, which the client gets on their final session. Um, so this is the intake form right here. And there's just some demographic information on the first page. Uh, there's what's called the psychotherapy scale, which basically assesses um, how much they think they need therapy um, and just some expectations regarding uh, beginning therapy. And then it gets into these scales, which map onto the three aspects of psychological functioning, uh, the first being the well-being scale. Um, so on the intake form, the well-being scale has four items each rated on a 0 to 4 Likert type scale. The psychological symptoms scale, so here's a variety of different symptoms. Uh, so there are 30 in total. And then the life functioning scale. And there are 11 items right there. Um, so that's the intake form, and when your client is completing his or her intake paperwork, um, this should be filled out, and the next step will be for you to open up the clinic poems tracking form. So this, um, I guess my understanding is there will be a copy of this file within each um, client's electronic charts. Um, so you can go ahead and fill out uh, this information up here, the, your, your name, the client's initials, medical records number, intake date. Um, and there's some instructions here, but I'm going to go through those instructions with you right now. So for each item that was on the intake poems, there's a space for you to fill that out on the tracking form. So starting with the psychotherapy scale, there are five, uh, five items. 
and you can just go ahead and enter those items right here. So it's on a 0 to 4 scale, so I'm just going to make up some numbers now. All right, and same thing, the four items of the well-being scale. So let's say this person's just beginning therapy and they're starting kind of on the low side. Um, the symptoms scale, uh, reporting some symptoms, again, on the low, low side. And for all of these scales, um, zero is most distressed or lowest functioning, and four is healthiest functioning. So you can just go ahead, once you have the intake poems, and go ahead and fill out this data. Here's the life functioning. Okay. Um, and that's it. Make sure to save it. So intake is done. Client is coming back for their first follow-up therapy session. And before your session, the client should receive the outcome assessment and monitoring form, the outcome monitoring form. So this looks somewhat similar. Um, make sure, this is really important, that all this information is filled out at the top because I guarantee if it's not filled up at the top, at some point during the semester you're going to end up with a stack of these forms. You'll have no idea who each form belongs to. Um, happens every year, but it can very easily be avoided by just taking the time to, at the end of each session, putting in the client's initials, their medical records number, um, and the date. So something that's a little bit different about the outcome monitoring form is this is what we call the bond scale. Um, this is basically a scale that assesses the therapeutic relationship. So how connected does your client feel to you? Um, and this can be a, a very helpful way over time to assess um, how's the strength of your therapeutic relationship going. Um, so then below that you have the well-being scale. Now on the outcome monitoring form, it's actually only two items. The symptom scale, this will be on the back, um, is only seven items compared to the original 30. And the life functioning scale is... Um, these aren't numbered for some reason, but I believe there are five items um, compared to the original mm, 11 or so. I can't even remember how many there were. Um, and this is just one question. How much have you been benefiting so far from therapy? So your, your client's going to fill this form out before every single session and really make sure um, that if... You know, even if the client comes in late, just ask them. It takes about five minutes to fill out this form, and it'll be really helpful uh, for you and also um, to talk about with your supervisor, and you can even talk about this with your client um, over time. So it's really important to make it a priority to make sure that your client is always remembering to fill this form out right before you're about to start your session. So let's say at the end of your first session, your client's filled out this form. They should be handing it to you. After the session, you can go back into the Clinic Poems tracking spreadsheet. And we call intake session one because we kind of look at therapy in terms of almost like doses of medicine. Um, so they call this kind of the dose effect uh, way of looking at therapy. So how many doses of um, therapy are they getting and kind of what's the effect as a result of that. So your first actual session, um, we're just calling session two because it's the second contact that you've had. So remember this is the bond scale that um, assesses the therapeutic relationship. So your client really likes you and we'll say that remember on a zero to four scale, um, mostly threes and fours. And then go ahead after session two and uh, fill out the their scores for the symptom scale and the uh, well-being symptoms and life functioning scale. And I'm just going to go ahead and put in some pretend numbers. Okay. And so on. So you do this for each session. Um, every single session. Make sure that they fill out this form beforehand. And at the end of the session, so for your third session, Come in again, 
client still really likes you, um, well being they're doing slightly better. And it doesn't matter that these items are, there are fewer items on the monitoring form than on the intake form. And the reason for that is when they were uh, norming this measure, they found that um, there's a very, very high correlation between the uh, selected items on the outcome monitoring form and the intake form. So this is kind of a snapshot of um, their uh, initial intake. And we're always going to be comparing each session to their intake, which is kind of serving as the baseline. Um, I'm just going to enter one more, oops, one more row of data. And we'll just enter all kind of threes and fours, and we'll see what that looks like in just a moment. Okay. So four sessions have gone by, including the intake, and each time you've been entering their scores from the poems. So the next step is you click down here where it says poems session means. So this is the raw data that you enter. When you click on the poem session means, this spreadsheet right here looks kind of messy, but we'll fix it up in just a bit. Um, at the top over here, this has each session, so intake, session two, session three, session four, and all the different scales. Not all these scales are on all the forms, so if you remember the psychotherapy scale was only on the intake poems. The bond scale wasn't on the intake poems, but it was beginning at session two, uh, on session two, in the outcome monitoring form. Um, then you have the well-being scale, the symptom scale, the life functioning scale, the benefit scale, which is this, that one question at the end, how much have you been benefiting from therapy so far? Then there's global mental health. Global mental health is really just, um, if you average these three together, the well-being, symptom scale, and life function scale, if you average all the items together, that will be the global scale. So it's kind of a more gross assessment of their overall psychological functioning. So we have this kind of messy looking um, table. So just click once on this um, line graph, rather. And when you click once on the line graph, you'll see this blue box surrounds um, the data that was pulled in from the poems raw data form. Okay, so we haven't had session five yet. So I'm just going to hover the uh, cursor over this bottom right corner. And, okay, so there we go. The, you see the, um, the graph respond based on where you drag this. So that's actually pretty cool. So um, you can drag this blue box to outline whichever scales you're interested in looking at. So let's say um, it's towards the beginning of the year, you're not too sure about um, how much you're going to be able to see any improvement in their well-being symptoms or life functioning, but you're really just focusing on creating a great therapeutic relationship, and that's your main goal. So you can just drag this box here like I did to surround just the bond scale, and you can see on your number of sessions, so this is each session here, starting at session two or your first real therapy session, how does your therapeutic bond progress over the course of treatment? Okay, so in this case, uh, you see an improvement and it stays kind of steady uh, by about the third session. All right, so let's say that you're interested in now looking at well-being, symptoms, and life functioning. And we can take the bond scale out of there just so we can focus a little bit more on these three aspects of psychological functioning. And we see the graph again adapt to show only those three scales. Um, so it looks like well-being started kind of uh, in the middle, had a little bit of drop at first, but then has been inclining a little bit. Uh, the symptom scale started fairly low, so more distressed. Remember zero is most distressed or most symptoms, um, and four is psychologically healthiest, fewest symptoms, 
best well-being, best life functioning. So you want to see um, more fours than uh, zeros over time. Um, so you can see psychological symptoms show some improvement and life functioning also shows some improvement. Um, if you want to compare these or if you're interested in just looking at the global snapshot, like I said, the global mental health scale. So overall, this particular client happens to be improving over the course of the first four sessions. And so that's what's kind of cool about this. You can just drag this um, blue box to surround whichever scales you're interested in focusing on. Um, the benefit scale, how much has therapy overall been benefiting the client? Okay, and there you go. That's basically it. Um, make sure to keep saving it. Each session, you're just going to enter the new row of data underneath the proper headings. And this will automatically um, pull in that data. Um, so let's say you have 10 or so sessions with a client. You can also drag this over to look at you know, just a, a selected number of sessions. So let's say the first four sessions uh, weren't going so well, but all of a sudden at session five, you feel like you hit your stride. Um, you're having some breakthroughs with your client. You can just kind of highlight those, f those selected sessions and you can see, um, you can focus in on how things are going just during those sessions if you don't if you're not as interested in looking at so that's pretty much the clinic poems tracking form um, there is also a discharge poems this is what you're going to give to your client on their final session if you know that you're going to have a final session um, with your client if you're able to uh, plan for that and this is basically very very similar to the intake poem so this has all four all the scales again the well-being psychological symptoms and life functioning um, but it has all the items instead of just the uh, selected ones that the monitoring form has okay um, so the next thing I want to show you is this is uh, very quickly a, an article um, called Prediction of Dose-Response Relations Based on Patient Characteristics uh, by Lutz, Larry, Kopta, Einstein, and Howard. It's from 2001, uh, the Journal of, I believe it's the Journal of Clinical Psychology. Um, but you can download this for free from the Loyola Library or from... Uh, Google Scholar and it's a great article article that kind of describes this um, phase model and using this method to track um, client progress and psychotherapy outcome but one thing in particular that I want to show you is um, here we go so this is table two, it's the eighth page of the article. So this has session numbers and the predicted um, percentage of clients who have improved by that session number. So you have the different scales here, the subjective well-being, current symptoms, psychological symptoms, and life functioning. And this mental health index, I think that's just what they call the um, global mental health, which is that average um, scale. So there, they they've done some previous research, so that they were able to establish the predicted course of improvement, and then this O column right here, the observed percentage. This is just observed from a sample that they're studying in this particular article. Um, but you can look at this and look at um, the session number, and get kind of an estimate of how many. Um, what percentage of clients have improved by that point? Um, and what we mean by improved is they've achieved a mean of three. So these numbers right here, this is the mean for each scale. 
Once their mean goes above three, remember on the zero to four scale, that's kind of what's considered within the healthy range of psychological functioning. So it's normal and expected that most clients in the beginning of therapy are gonna be, of course, below the three range. Um, but once their averages start to hit three, that is an indication to you as the clinician that they're doing better overall, that they've shown some improvement. Um, it could help help you to have some sort of barometer uh, for when is a good time to end treatment or to at least begin talking about termination if they've been achieving some symptom reduction or some improvement in well-being or life functioning. Um, so what you see is these three separate phases kind of occur, uh, improvement occurs at different rates um, at different times throughout the course of treatment. So what you see is well-being is kind of the first phase to improve. So by session two, about 40% of uh, clients are already showing improvement where their mean for that scale is reaching a three or higher. Uh, whereas uh, for psychological symptoms, at session two, really only about 17% of clients have been reaching a, a mean of three or higher. And it kind of goes on. So by about session eight, you're seeing most, the majority of clients improving on each of the three scales. Um, and this is just a, an, based on averages. There's still you know some clients who don't end up improving. And even after a year of treatment, there are some longer term clients who uh, are not yet showing improvement. But this gives you a, a kind of general index of, you know, on average, how long it takes for clients to improve. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting to, to look at and keep in mind. And they've also gone on in this article to talk about different rates of improvements based on different diagnoses. So you have adjustment disorder, depression, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, bipolar anxiety, and slightly different predicted rates of improvement. Uh, so this is kind of cool for you to keep in mind as you're working with different clients with different diagnoses um, and to kind of compare how is your particular client doing based on maybe what's predicted for that client, um, based on that client's um, disorder. Um, so that's pretty much it. Um, I hope you um, find this to be a useful tool. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me. Um, you, know, you can talk to any of the supervisors at the clinic. They should have my contact information, know how to get in touch with me. I'm definitely happy to help out. Um, this could be, uh, I could definitely see some potential dissertations coming out of this type of data. Um, I th one of the nice things about this tracking form, it allows us to look at data in a way that we've never really been able to do before. Um, and this actually came out of my dissertation. So for my dissertation, I collected some, um, some of this data using the poems at the clinic. And um, there's a, a lot of potential for other possible projects to come out of this. So there you go. That's pretty much it. Um, and uh, good luck at the clinic this year. Take care.